Welcome back legends. Today we're going to talk about where to live in Medellin. It's such a varied city with so many different kind of barrios and neighborhoods that what one guy likes, another one might hate. Because there's so much to say about each area guys, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to give three very distinct pros of each area and three distinct cons. We're going to be completely honest so that you can make up your mind on which is best for you. Let's start with number one, the most popular tourist dense neighborhood in all of Medellin, El Poblado. All right, let's talk about the pros about living in Poblado. Number one pro are the restaurants and nightlife basically here in El Poblado. Anywhere you go in the city, you're not gonna find anything similar to what you can find in El Poblado. El Poblado is quite big. It has various sections. The most touristy and the place where you see all of the nightlife and a lot of the restaurants is called Provenza. It's where you go clubbing, it's where you go take a date for a nice meal and for cocktails. You'll find it all in Provenza. So the pro is that if you do like nightlife, you like to go clubbing, you like to go to nice restaurants, a lot of the time you're going to find yourself traveling to El Poblado. If you really want a full selection of everything or at least as good of a full selection as Medellin and Colombia has, True. this is the place you want to be because you can just walk within 100 meters and find 10 different variety of food. Whereas in Laureles or Belen or something, you walk and see 10 restaurants and the menu is more or less going to be all the same stuff. And the second pro guys is that if you want to come up and you want to live the luxury lifestyle, no other place provides that like El Poblado does. The apartments in El Poblado a lot of them are a lot more spacious, uh, more modern. On top of that, it is cost-effective depending on where you're coming from. If yeah. you're coming from a city like New York, Los Angeles, even Miami, you're gonna think, wow, this is very cost-effective. I'm in the Beverly Hills of Medellin. Comparatively to some of the major cities in the United States, the nice areas in those cities, you're not gonna be able to compare those prices to what you can get here in El Poblado. Andrew said it perfectly when he said, this is the Beverly Hills of Medellin. If you really have the money to spend and you wanna kind of treat yourself, live a kind of lifestyle that maybe you wouldn't be able to live in the States, this is the place to splash that cash to do so. And the third pro is that it's very safe in terms of Medellin, right? Yeah, I'd say it's pretty safe. I've lived in, like I said, seven different neighborhoods and in a lot of the neighborhoods I was able to walk at night or whatever, but in Medellin as a whole, you've got to be careful. And El Poblado is no different, but at the same time, I've never been mugged. I've never been robbed. A lot of the buildings have their own security guard. They have their own fences that sometimes are even electric wired fences, etc. And I've never had an incident here. Let's get to the cons now. And I think most of you guys who know anything about Medellin and have been here before probably know what this one is. The number one biggest con is that it's expensive not expensive compared to la or new york or something but in terms of what other options you can get around medellin it's very expensive and we talk about that in another video but do you want to just without getting too deep into it just touch on what i mean by expensive the prices of the apartments in el poblado have risen in the past few years because of the influx of foreigners that want to come here not only to visit not just tourists but people that actually want to come here and settle here longer term for six months, maybe a year. The local owners have seen that and they're taking advantage of it. The locals that own the apartments, because foreigners don't own more than, let's say 5%. 5% would be a lot if they owned more than 5% of the apartments in El Bolo. And 4% is you. Yeah. <laughs> the locals, me being included, are taking advantage of this and jacking up the prices on Airbnb and for your longer term tenants that wanna be here for like a year or two years you jack up the price because the demand is there. That being said, El Poblado is the most expensive place to live. If you're a baller on the budget, if you're not making more than $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 a month, you're gonna find this an expensive place to live. Granted, you can rent an apartment or share a flat with someone, but for the price that you rent a room in El Poblado, you could probably rent a whole apartment in Belen, Floresta. Even Not probably. Florida. You definitely can. You, you could, yeah. I've just been researching all this for a subscriber of mine, actually. Right. Man, you definitely can. You can. A room here in someone's house with a shared bathroom, another area you can get a whole apartment. And you said something funny before, actually, which kind of was like, what? You said baller on a budget. If How can someone be a baller and be on a budget also? Because you're a baller. You're born a baller. I was born a baller. I was just born poor. <laughs> and now you're gentrifying all the money. <laughs> With that said, <laughs> let's get into the number two. Guys, I've told you this in other videos. This is one reason I don't live in Poblado, 
is that it actually attracts the worst kind of foreigner. If you look at all the crypto bros and the flex culture and the sex tourists and all those people. What do you call those? The passport bros? They're passport bros. Yeah. yeah. It has the worst type of foreigners here mm. because maybe you just want to come and learn Spanish and hang out and you don't want to party and you don't want to be doing stupid things. You might get very sick of Poblado because especially in Provenza and near Parque Lleras and stuff, you're going to see all that type of stuff. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I, I, I have a local bar similar to something that I would go to in the United States. I grew up in Southern California, but you're right about the people that go there. Sometimes you'll see the loud mouth Americans and they're yelling and they're talking about girls openly because yeah. they don't think that anybody can understand English and they're saying what they would do to the waitress. Oh. So you can run into that yes. in El Poblado. You will, you will. run into yeah. that no matter where you go in El Poblado. Trash pats, I like to call them. Oh, yeah. But also, not talking about the trash pats, but if you are maybe coming to Colombia because you want to immerse yourself in the culture and you want to hang out with Colombians, you want to practice your Spanish in the street, you don't want to speak English, and you really want to learn and experience the Colombian culture, this is not true Medellin, I wouldn't say. Yeah, you're not going to get that full experience of being in a Colombian neighborhood because of all the hostels and hotels and tourists around it. And here, everyone's trying to make a buck, like the guy selling the soccer shirts, the guy asking for money, the indigenous woman dancing on the corner with her baby. You're not going to get away from that in El Poblado, mm -hmm. whereas in a local neighborhood, you're not going to get that because they don't go there to make money. And the third con, guys, is something that might only affect a small percent of the population. If you're a bit older or you're very unfit, <laughs> this is not the best place to walk around because it's so hilly. Basically, there's no flat area at all. It's right. just up and down, up and down. And it's a lot hillier than other areas of Medellin. So fitness is not your thing. Keep that in mind when you're booking. Guys, if you're finding this helpful, make sure you hit that like button. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And also remember to subscribe because we have plenty of these videos coming. With that said, let's move into the next one, which is Lower Ellis. All right, pro number one, guys, is that it's green, it's flat, it's walkable, which is kind of uh, something difficult to find in Medellin because we are in a valley and some of the nicer neighborhoods are usually up in the hills, especially in the south. It's, it's a hilly area. So to find a nice neighborhood that is middle to upper income and that is flat is actually something special. And Laureles is definitely special. And one thing I wanted to touch on, actually, which we should mention is very important. In Medellin, they have things called estratos, which are basically levels of income. Okay, so six, level six is the highest, like some places of Poblado. Right. And level one is the lowest. Like if you go high up into the mountains of Medellin, that's where the lower income people live. So Poblado more or less is level five and six. Right. Laureles is more or less level four and five. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about where you're living. Do you want to tell us about number two, Andrew? The second pro is the cost of living. It's much more affordable than in El Poblado while still maintaining a lot of options. You have a lot of supermarkets there, you have shopping centers, you've got restaurants, you've got daily uh, people selling fruits and vegetables on the street, but at a much lower cost than if you were living in a place like El Poblado or Las Palmas, where it's a lot more expensive and you got an Uber everywhere. But since it's flat and it's affordable, it's a great place to live. On top of that, the rents are cheaper than living in El Poblado. In El Poblado, you may be expected to pay $1,000 per month, $2,000 per month, and up. Laurelis, for $1,000 or $2,000, you're living like... The sultan of, I don't know, of, of what? And the distinct point about its affordability is that it still gives you a lot of options that you can get in Poblado. Granted, not as many, but you can still find your varied cuisines over there. You can still find all the activities. They still have the options while still being cheap. I think that's where the really nice blend is. Laureles actually retains a lot of the things to do. And also there's many events there, language exchanges and networking. So you can still have a community. You will not be so, I guess, isolated but you'll save money. The third pro is that it has more of a local feeling or at least a more of a local neighborhood type vibe. Laurelis, since it is flat and walkable, you're gonna meet a lot of your neighbors out walking when they come home from work, when they're leaving in the morning, going to the gym, going to the grocery store. It's a lot more Colombian in that sense. And that's what makes Laurelis very special. If you really wanna immerse and you wanna walk in the park and you wanna to talk to someone about their day and practice your Spanish and learn a bit about their life, 
Laurelis would be a great place to do this. Yeah, if you need to practice Spanish, that's a great place to do it. Yeah. You can do it in a place like El Poblado, but like we said before, you're going to run into a lot of foreigners. And, and a lot of people trying to sell you shit. And, yeah, and a lot of people trying to sell your shit where yeah. they're not going to have a natural conversation with you. So in Laurelis, you're going to get less foreigners, more local people that aren't trying to just take advantage of you to sell you something where you can actually have a conversation. But be careful because Laurelis is huge. And it is huge. even in Laurelis, it's very different. They're yeah. different pockets. Like where I live is Conquistadores. And that's basically just old people living there. So it's yeah. very relaxing, not much crazy stuff going on. But you go a few streets down and you got a place called La Setenta, which is bloody crazy as shit, right? All of Laurelis is not made the same. So make sure you know exactly where you want to stay for what fits you. Okay, so those are the pros. What about the cons? Andrew, do you want to tell the guys the number one most annoying thing about living in Laurentis? I would have to say the noise levels. If you live anywhere near a major street, you're going to get a lot of traffic noise. There is a lot of traffic in Medellin as a whole. And since we're talking about Laurentis, a lot of traffic does go through Laurentis because it's, it's actually more central uh, going towards like El Centro. So there's a lot of traffic that goes through it as well. Not only just going in and out of to live in it. I live, as I said, in Laureles. And I actually live right near one of the main streets called Avenida Boliviriana. Boliv yeah. And it's noisy all the time. So the next one, big one, is if you're an impatient person, traffic congestion. Basically, most of the time, you're going to be stuck in some sort of traffic. And it can be very frustrating because yeah. it can be bumper to bumper, stopped, and you can get a shitty Uber with no air con and you're mm. just sweating your balls off. A big con for me is traffic. I come from Los Angeles or Southern California as a whole. Just so much traffic. You waste on average like 10 years of your life in traffic cool. if you live your whole life in Southern California. I don't want to waste any more time. Yeah. I don't, I'd don't. rather be doing stuff that I like to do. So if that's one thing that irks you, then you might want to reconsider living in a and Laureles and living somewhere where you are going to be more comfortable. The third biggest con is I was actually looking at a map the other day about air pollution. And the worst place actually in the whole city, Laureles is up there. Is up there one of wow. the worst places because of all the non-moving traffic and yeah. many cars. And you can feel it. You can definitely feel it. Yeah, the air pollution and noise pollution. A con for the, those of you that like to walk a lot and be outdoors, maybe ride your bike or do whatever. Yeah. And air quality is important to you. All right, now let's get into the third area that we recommend you guys live. A beautiful area. And that is Envigado. So the biggest pro about Envigado is something that stops a lot of people from coming to Medellin, actually. Envigado is the safest area in all of Medellin. It's only about... 15 minutes without traffic from Poblado, with traffic, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the reason why it's so safe is because the local bad guys all are from there. They've been in power for a long time, and criminals know you don't go there to rob. Because mm. if you do, you're not going to come out walking. You're probably going to come out in a body bag or thrown in the river. And they take their safety very seriously over there. In our last video, Andrew spoke about street justice where petty street criminals are not punished properly in this country. So the locals will actually catch them and beat them up. Yeah. And that happens a lot. I've heard a lot of those stories in Envigado, actually. Right, right. Yeah, so it is a lot safer. That's definitely pro number one. Now, pro number two is the access to greenery, to nature. You're literally living in nature in Envigado. You've got a lot of hiking, beautiful hills, beautiful trees, gigantic plants. It's really like living in the forest. Waterfalls, beautiful hikes. So if nature is your thing. And the outdoors. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. is your place. And the final pro is that there's a variety of housing options over there. In Poblado or Laureles, you might only find basically apartments. But in Envigado, you can find apartments. You can find big, big houses as right. well and everything in between. Yeah, yeah, that's something that you don't see a lot of in most of the city in Medellin. You're not going to find a house with like a front yard, backyard. And in Bigado, you might find more than you would anywhere else in Medellin. That's definitely a big pro if you're coming with a family mm -hmm. or you just want to have that big house with a front lawn or a, a backyard to put a pool in or a trampoline, whatever the case may be. It's a lot different than most of the neighborhoods in Medellin. And it's all very affordable. 
Yes, and it's very affordable compared to, for example, El Poblado and even parts of Laurelis. In terms of all the three spots that we're speaking about in this video, Envigado is by far the cheapest. However, the only downfall is, although it's cheap, it doesn't have the range of options as the other two. So just keep that in mind. On that note, let's get to the cons of Envigado. And con number one is... Limited nightlife. If you're a party guy coming here to stay for a weekend or stay for a week and get shit-faced every day, go to a different nightclub and pick up a different girl or for 13 years or for th <laughs> there are parts that do have some nightclubs some restaurants but we always found ourselves taxing over to el poblado because that's where most single young people go to party the nightlife is limited out there although you can find it you can find other nightclubs close to Envigado as well like in itagui you're not going to get the same as for example, El Poblado or even in Laurelos San La, La Setenta. And the second big con, especially for you guys who, you know, want to build an expat community, maybe don't speak Spanish that well, yeah. is that there's hardly any expat community out there in Envigado. I've seen maybe one event in the whole yeah. time that I've been here, there's not really much going on there in terms of gringo events. And that was one big con for me when I lived there. I found that I was taxiing or Ubering over to El Poblado just to watch a basketball game, a football game on Sunday, or just going to a bar and talking to people was more difficult to find. I have a question for you, Andrew. I want to ask you, let's, let's call it the gringo meter, okay? So if we say gringo meter, it goes one to 10. Poblado is a, is a 10. Is a 10. Yeah. What would you say Laurelis is on the gringo meter? Oh, probably a five. And no, what no. about Envigado? Probably a three or a two. Okay, okay, yeah. whoa, two. Yeah, because there are parts of Envigado where you're going to be in and there's no foreigners at all. Maybe one foreigner mm -hmm. that you might run into. So this might scare some people away actually from saying that. If they don't really know Spanish and they're maybe yeah. not the most extroverted people, maybe a bit more of an introvert and need some events and stuff to meet people, they're not just talking to randos on the street. That might be a problem. No? Yeah, because you could feel very alone. Although you're surrounded by really nice people, the nicest people in the world. The Paisas by nature famously are known for being some of the nicest people. But if you don't speak the language and you can't make a connection, you will feel lonely. I've had many friends that have lived in various parts of the city. Some have even left the country and gone back to the United States or to somewhere or like Mexico, where there are more expats and more of an American lifestyle because they couldn't find that here. And, and in Bigado, you're probably not going to find that very easily. Everything we said about this being a con could quite easily be yeah, a pro for many people like me i love this yeah i just said, I walking around hey, I'm the only one. Yeah. everyone look at me and talk to yeah. me <laughs> the third and final con for envigado is the distance since it is outside of medellin it's adjacent to medellin but it is farther south you're going to have to take an uber if you want to go to a place in el poblado if you want to go to a shopping center in el poblado or anywhere else in the city of medellin you're going to have to take some sort of transportation whether it's the metro uber taxi whatever the case may be there is a distance there and a lot of the times that is a turnoff because you don't want to just stay in Envigado. you want to leave and go somewhere in the city for a nice dinner because you're you've been to all of the restaurants in Envigado. guess what you're going to be taking an uber every time you want to get down here now we're done with telling you guys about all the pros and cons of the three areas we're actually going to reveal our favorite areas in all of Medellin and where we recommend staying, but only for a certain type of person, right? Right. The Medellin Masterclass is here, a specially curated course that goes in depth on everything that we've talked about in this video. We'll teach you how to create an amazing life here, much like we've already created for ourselves. In addition, you'll get access to our community full of people just like you who want to live in Medellin or are already living in Medellin. Right now, we're only taking 10 students because this course is very intense and very personal. So if you're ready to start living the dream, click the link in the description, fill out the form, and we'll send you more information. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of this video. My favorite place, as a lot of you probably already guessed, is El Poblado. Like I said before, I've been here for 13 years. I've lived in seven different neighborhoods, including downtown Medellin, Floresta, Calasanz, but my favorite favorite is El Poblado and it's a certain section in El Poblado called Manila. I would have to say that it is the most accessible for what I want to do in my life, going to bars, meeting people, going to parties, going to play basketball at the university, whatever the case might be, it's easier for me to access all these things from this area and that's why I love it.
you're right in saying that this is an awesome place, Andrew, because guys, I quite hate poblado, to be honest, but I love Manila. <laughs> I love Manila. It's almost like it's not poblado. It's almost it like poblado. it, yeah, because it doesn't really have the trashy kind of people around here. It's more hostels and digital nomads and it's kind of that vibe you know and i grew up in that community for a long time being in surf towns and stuff and it's kind of got that like you know everyone trying to figure it out and going to work cafes and stuff some awesome co-works and stuff around here right. it's a really cool place many options and that's a great choice Andrew. right what type of person should stay here the type of person that likes to live comfortably the type of person that wants to go out and do stuff even in the middle of the week going to a bar going on a date to a restaurant going to a nightclub on the weekend and be able to walk there and walk back home someone that wants to go to the gym which is just a block away and work out and then go to the co-working and then come back home all in within your same neighborhood it's within a, a mile yeah it's within a mile it's it's amazing it's great but let's just say you know for argument's sake you're going to be spending about a thousand dollars to three thousand dollars per month on an apartment in el poblado my favorite place is a little well not that little but it's a, a neighborhood south of laureles you can get there from my place which is in laureles to this place in about five minutes in an uber and that place is called belen I absolutely love Belen for the fact that it's so local. So I'll go there a couple of times a week. I mainly go there to play tennis at this sports complex. The sports complex has a running track, has basketball courts, tennis courts, 10-pin bowling, swimming pool. Better than that is that there's hardly any foreigners there. So I go there, hang out with all my Colombian friends, meeting Colombians. After I finish up, I go to the local juice shops, hang out there, talk to the guys there. Me and my girlfriend, we just like, hey, let's go out on a Saturday and just walk around and see what we can find. We walked around there and we found a vegan restaurant, which did Menu Del Dia for $12,000, right. $3. So four course Menu Del Dia. So those are the real great deals you can find there. And the rent is much, much cheaper also. And the type of person that would love to live there is someone who wants to experience authentic Colombian culture. You don't want to party, don't want to really be talking to foreigners every day. You want to make Colombian friends. You want to learn all about what Colombian life is about. That's a place for you. Stay tuned for the next video. See you guys next time.